ABC News exclusive, a gripping inside account of what really happened when little Ethan was kidnapped off his school bus in Alabama. All reported by our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas. And Pierre, uh, this information, these tapes are just extraordinary and they show the epitome of heroism. Good morning, George. It really is. We're going to give our friends at home unprecedented access to what really happened when little Ethan was kidnapped. It was a situation far more dangerous than we ever knew and we will actually hear from the kidnapper for the first time. It's a story about good and evil, about heroes and people willing to make unbelievable sacrifices. The 21 children are almost home when Jimmy Lee Dykes, known as the mean man of the neighborhood, storms onto their Alabama school bus wielding a gun. I need two boys, 68 years old, with two boys, come on. Dykes wants to kidnap the children. Bus driver Charles Poland resists a man he thought was his friend. It's all caught on tape heard here exclusively for the very first time. Can't do it. Do it. Sorry. I'm going to have to shoot. How about shoot a kid? No. Do it. Do it. It's my responsibility. I can't help that. Kids all That's the it. I can't help that. I can't turn them over to somebody else. Unrelenting, Dykes turns to the children. Come here, kid. The two in the back say, you, the girl, and that boy right there. Come here. Then Dykes locks in on a five-year-old boy named Ethan sitting directly behind the driver. Poland pleads not Ethan and heroically puts himself between Ethan and Dykes. The other children are screaming and hiding behind their seats. 15-year-old Trey Watts has the courage to dial 911. He's asking for kids. He's asking for kids? Yes, ma'am. He's aiming the gun at the bus driver? Yes, ma'am. Oh my gosh, what's going on? What's up with that? What's he doing now, honey? <laughs> Poland dies after being shot five times. Dykes drags Ethan to an underground bunker he has secretly built on his property. Ethan has autism and no one knows how he's going to react. And an army of 300 law enforcement descends on the scene, stunned by what is happening in this tiny town of Midland City. And a six day siege begins. My heart has stopped. We spoke exclusively with key members of the team of federal, state, and local authorities who fought to save Ethan's life. We thought Ethan was going to die. This is the bunker seen for the first time, 12 feet below ground, only 8 feet by 6 feet, about the size of a parking space. It has ventilation, electricity, bunk beds, painstakingly built over months. Dykes tells police to speak to him through this plastic pipe, which has a deadly surprise. There's a bomb in it. They were on top of the pipe mm. that he could have detonated the bomb at any time. I was immediately concerned. The FBI quickly dispatches Molly Ammon, one of its top behavioral scientists, to Alabama. He was angry, but intelligent and controlled. Police are choosing their words carefully. I want to thank him for taking care of our child. They know Dykes is watching TV, but Dykes grows more belligerent. It is now day six. Listen as he rants at negotiators. I mean, you just go ahead and send some down that damn uh, funnel up there to their death. Dykes is furious at the government. I have the ability and I have the to show just how corrupt this damn system is, just how corrupt you people are. Negotiator Sean Van Slyke says Dykes only saw one option, killing himself as some sort of grandiose statement. And there's a bizarre twist. His intent was to have a female reporter down there with him and that she would hold his hand. Uh, well, in fact, he got his final message out to the world uh, and then committed suicide in her presence. The danger to Ethan is increasing every second. He was handling the weapons and the bomb inside the bunker on a more frequent basis. And Dykes has a diabolical plan for Ethan. Jim Dykes relayed to the negotiators. If anything happens to me, I have told Ethan pull the trigger. That meant he had told Ethan to detonate the IED, the second IED that was inside the bunker. He's teaching Ethan to kill himself. It's decision time. The tactical team would have to rescue Ethan by force. The job falls to Commander Kevin Cornelius and his team, men with families. Now that certainly isn't lost on me. The majority of them have children as well. In the command post, when the authorities were, were granted to execute the plan, uh, there was silence. The team breaches the bunker with a stun grenade. Dykes detonates the perimeter bomb. They immediately received gunfire uh, from Mr. Dykes. There was a IED inside the, the bunker as well? Yes, sir. 
he was in the process of trying to detonate it. For several minutes, no one at the command center knows what's happening. Quiet, quiet. I think we were all praying. Dykes is shot and killed in the confrontation. Oh, Ethan and the agents are okay, remarkably sustaining no major injuries. There was so much joy at saving Ethan's, but everyone's thoughts quickly returned to Mr. Poland, the bus driver who laid down his life for his friend, Ethan, a true hero, just like the FBI agents who went down that black hole to save a little boy's life. Boy, selfless act after selfless act, just incredible, Pierre. You know, and so many times, you know, people at home, they watch the story as it unfolds because it took days. They have no idea until seeing your piece right now what really happens and, and glad that Ethan is doing all right. And, and we do need to remember the bus driver and all this. Mm -hmm. Indeed, in fact, during those interviews, I was struck by how these veteran law enforcement officers mm. all had tears in their eyes during the entire process. It's that human element we forget. I mean, they're family men and women yeah. as well. Indeed. Remarkable. Thank Riveting you for bringing stuff that here. to us. Thank you. And you're going to have a lot more tonight on World News and 2020. Looking forward to it. Okay, Pierre, thank you.